Before I grew up and went out into the world, we were all at home there, in our faded cottage in the meadow. All of us, safe and warm. Then I knew just the earth itself, the quiet measure of the seasons, the primal certainty of spring. Then we were all there together, the years not yet come on us, these years of war and money and torrents of blood. Louise McNeil. The history of West Virginia is a history of conflict, a history of struggle. But it's also a history of people hanging together, of people struggling, of people surviving, of people knowing who they are, and of people learning how to come together to, to increasingly address their problems. And we have a sense of community in West Virginia that many other parts of the country wish they had. know and fewer still understand a place of terrible beauty that many think of as strange and peculiar yet its story is distinctly American it is the story of a frontier where native people fought a tide of white settlers until fighting became impossible where America's first great military commander nearly resigned in despair after a string of defeats. It is the story of a bitter civil war that pitted neighbor against neighbor in fierce guerrilla warfare. While a deeply religious country boy ravaged his native land with ruthless passion. And the struggle over union led to one state being torn in half. It is the story of an explosion of industry that drew workers from around the world to the mountains of Appalachia. where three young brothers were executed at dusk along a riverbank, igniting America's most famous family feud. Where a feisty 80-year-old labor organizer incited coal miners to armed rebellion. And a skinny, jug-eared police chief shot it out with mine guards in a town called Maitwan. West Virginia is not your average state. And 
many ways, West Virginia was a, was a guinea pig for the whole country's experiment on industrialization. And there are plenty of communities around the country, around the developed world now, that are waking up and finding that their main local resources are owned by absentee owners, and they're confronting a situation that West Virginia's confronted for over a century. And it is the story of how an ambitious first lady, shaken by the misery she saw during the Great Depression, created one of America's most controversial social experiments. And a young president focused the nation's attention on a state where the sun does not always shine, he said, but the people do. My grandfather walked over the mountains as an ex-slave and came into West Virginia and established a home. And uh, I have a very firm love and attachment for the state of West Virginia. Uh, I don't believe that my life could be any better anyplace else. And so I intend to try to stay here. I think the mountains burn themselves into the psyche, somehow in the heart or the soul of the people from this place. I first realized it, I think, when I went to study for a semester in England. It's the first time I'd ever been away from West Virginia for more than a week. And at the end of it, I was so homesick. Um, and I could shut my eyes and imagine mountains. And I could almost feel mountains inside of me. It's like this ache. I don't think I've lost that feeling whenever I leave and come back. It's always there. There's a sense that I'm back again. I'm home. 